Suppose we have a circle K with center point O and a point P outside of the circle. Then we can define the power of the point P with respect to the circle K either as PA squared where A is such point that PA is tangent line to the circle K or as PB times PC. So we know that PA squared equals PB times PC and it equals PB prime times PC prime for any other line that we've chosen that intersects the circle at points B prime and C prime and that passes through P. But of course, this definition only works for points P outside of the circle. And we know that we can define a power of a point for points P inside of the circle as well. Now we're going to give a more general definition for power of a point that works no matter where the point P is. It could be outside of the circle, inside of the circle, or on the circle itself. Let the radius of the circle be R. We know that because PA is tangent to the circle and O is its center, then this angle here is 90 degrees. Then we can apply the Pythagorean theorem for this triangle OPA, and we get the hypotenuse OP squared equals R squared plus PA squared. It's written here, but we know that PA squared is the power of P with respect to K, so we can replace it here. And so we got that the power of P with respect to K is OP squared minus R squared. Or in other words, it is the distance between the point and the center of the circle squared, which is here, minus the radius of the circle R squared. And as you can see, this definition does not depend on the location of P. When P is outside of the circle, then the distance from P to O, the center, is greater than R. And so this quantity will be positive. When P is on the circle, then the distance between P and O is by definition R, so we would get R squared minus R squared, so we would get zero. So the power of all points on the circle is zero. And when P is inside of the circle, then the distance between P and O is less than R, and so this quantity will be negative, and so the power of the point would be negative. Now let's consider a point Q that is inside of the circle. We know that the power of Q with respect to the circle K is defined as minus QA times QB. And let's see if this definition matches the one we have here. We know that the power of Q is negative QA times QB for a random chord AB that passes through Q. So I'm going to take this chord A prime B prime that passes through Q and also passes through the point O. So this would be a diameter in the circle. Then the power of Q would be negative QA prime times QB prime, as written here. Now let's call this distance x. Then this distance is r minus x because O A prime equals r. And this distance here is r. And therefore Q A prime times Q B prime is x times 2r minus x. So we have this. And now we can rewrite this expression as follows. r minus x squared minus r squared. Because the r squared from here would cancel out, the x squared goes here, x times x, and the minus 2 times rx goes here, minus 2 times rx. And this r minus x is this segment, which is oq. And so this equals OQ squared minus R squared. And now see this definition, OP squared minus R squared is the power of P with respect to the circle K, and the power of Q with respect to K is OQ squared minus R squared. It is exactly the same definition. Therefore, we can extend this definition to points also inside of the circle. Now that we know the full definition of a power of a point, let's ask ourselves, if we have two circles such as these, which points in the plane have the same power with respect to this circle and with respect to this circle? Here we're going to assume that one of the circles lies completely outside of the other circle. Let's call this circle K1 with center O1 and radius R1, and let this circle be K2 with center O2 and radius R2. And let P be a point such that the power of P with respect to K1 equals the power of P with respect to K2. From the definition of a power of a point, we have that this equals this, and this equals this. And so this is the equation we have. We can rearrange it and write it as P01 squared minus P02 squared equals R1 squared minus R2 squared. Now let's construct an altitude PH in this triangle, and let's apply the Pythagorean theorem for this triangle and this triangle. From the first Pythagorean theorem, we get P01 squared, the hypotenuse, equals O1H squared plus PH squared. And from the second Pythagorean theorem, we get that P02 squared, the hypotenuse, equals O2H squared, plus pH squared. Now we can subtract these two equalities and we get PO1 squared minus PO2 squared, then pH cancels out, and then we get O1H squared minus O2H squared. Hence, we can replace this expression here to get that this expression equals this expression, and we know that this side of the equality can be rewritten like this, O1H minus O2H 
times O1H plus O2H. But now this distance is just the distance between O1 and O2. And so dividing both sides here by O1, O2, we get that O1H minus O2H, which is here, equals this side divided by O1, O2. And as I previously said, O1H plus O2H equals O1, O2, because this plus this equals this. Now we can take these two equalities and add them. Then O2H is going to cancel out here and here. And we're going to be left with 2 times O1H, which is here, equals this plus this, which is here. Finally, we can remove this 2 by dividing both sides by 2. And hence, we get this equality. And what's so important about this equality? Oh, see, R1 is constant. It doesn't depend on the choice of P. R2 is also constant. It doesn't depend on the choice of P. O1, O2 is just the distance between the two centers of the circles. So it also doesn't depend on the choice of P. And hence, the right-hand side here is constant and doesn't depend on the choice of P. Therefore, this length is constant and doesn't depend on the choice of P. And so H is constant and doesn't depend on the choice of P. Therefore, if we chose P such that the power of P with respect to this circle equals the power of P with respect to this circle, and we drop a perpendicular from P to this line connecting the two centers, then this point will have a fixed position. And therefore, the points P we could have chosen are those that lie on this perpendicular line through the point H, for which O1H is this distance here. And now I'm going to prove that for an arbitrary point P prime that lies on this perpendicular line, the power of P prime with respect to K1 equals the power of P prime with respect to R2. We're going to show that the power of P prime with respect to the first circle minus the power of P prime with respect to the second circle equals zero, from which it would follow that this power equals this power. Now, by definition, the power of P prime with respect to K1 is P prime O1 squared minus R1 squared. And the power of P prime with respect to K2 is P prime O2 squared minus R2 squared. Now, this can be rewritten as P prime O1 squared minus P prime O2 squared, which is here, minus R1 squared plus R2 squared. And by applying Pythagorean theorems for this triangle and this triangle, we can replace P prime O1 squared by P prime H squared plus O1 H squared. So this squared can be replaced by this squared plus this squared. And similarly, this squared can be replaced by this squared plus this squared. So we can write instead of minus P prime O2 squared, we can write minus P prime H squared minus O2 H squared. We rewrite this here. And then we need to show that this expression is zero. But then P prime H squared cancels out here and here. And for the special point H, we know that this equality is true from before. And this equality tells us that we can cancel out O1 H squared minus O2 H squared, which is here, with R1 squared minus R2 squared, which is here, but with an opposite sign, so we can cancel them. And then we get zero. And so the power of any point on this line is equal for both circles. This special line, which is perpendicular to the line connecting the centers of the circles, is called the radical axis of the two circles. The only circles without a radical axis are those that share a common center, such as these two. Let's see what happens for two circles that are externally tangent at this point. We know that the point of tangency lies on the line defined by the two centers, and we know that this point, since it lies on both circles, has power zero with respect to this circle, and power zero with respect to the other circle and therefore it lies on the radical axis. We know that the radical axis is always perpendicular to the line connecting the two centers, and therefore this is it. The common tangent line to both circles is the radical axis, which means that for all points here on this common tangent line, the power of P with respect to this circle equals the power of P with respect to the other circle. Similarly, for circles that are internally tangent, the point of tangency has power zero with respect to both circles because it lies on both of them, and so the radical axis must pass through this point and be perpendicular to this line, the line passing through these two centers. This would be the radical axis, meaning that for a point here on this common tangent line, the power of P with respect to the small circle would equal the power of P with respect to the large circle. It's interesting to see what happens when one of the circles is contained in the other. Then we can construct again the line between the two centers. And then where is the radical axis? Well, I'm not going to prove it, but it turns out that it lies somewhere here, outside of both circles. It's again perpendicular to the line connecting the two centers. And so all points P on that line would have the same power with respect to the two circles. The easiest case is when the two circles intersect at two points, because then we know that this point has a power zero with respect to both circles, and this point also has power zero with respect to both circles. And therefore, this must be the radical axis of the two circles. 
and indeed is perpendicular to the line defined by the two centers, and that's because this point and this point are symmetric with respect to this line. After all, we have an isosceles triangle here and an isosceles triangle here. Hence, any point on the radical axis would have the same power with respect to this circle and this circle. There are two important things to note here. The first one is that if a point P has the same power with respect to two circles and lights outside of both circles, it means that this length equals this length, where this and this are tangent lines to each of the circles and these here are the points of tangency. The other thing to note is that it's possible for one of the circles to have zero radius. For example, we can think of this point here as a circle with zero radius and center here at the same point. Then there would again exist a radical axis for these two circles. And this radical axis would be perpendicular to this line connecting the center of the circle to this point. And for all points on this radical axis, we have that the power of P with respect to this circle, which is the length of this segment squared, equals the power of P with respect to this circle with zero radius, which is this distance squared minus zero squared. So it's just this distance squared. And therefore, this distance equals this distance for all such points P on this line. Here's the optional problem. We have a circle and a point outside of the circle and two tangency lines from this point to the circle. And then these points are chosen such that this is a midpoint of this segment and this is a midpoint of this segment. This point is chosen randomly on this line. We draw a tangent line from this point to the circle. This is the point of tangency. And we need to prove that this segment equals this segment. And here's the solution. Consider this circle, then consider this point as a circle with zero radius. Then this point lies on the radical axis of the two circles because this length equals this length. Similarly, this point lies on the radical axis of the two circles because this length equals this length. And the power of this point with respect to this circle is this squared. The power of this point with respect to this circle with radius zero is this squared. And hence, this is the radical axis of the two circles. This point lies on the radical axis of the two circles. Therefore, the power of this point with respect to this point, which is this squared, equals the power of this point with respect to this circle, which is this squared. And so, this equals this.